Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Tivedi and in this segment today we are going to depoliticize actually the hijab controversy. This topic is very important from the perspective of GS Main's paper too and also to form a more balanced approach because it might be asked in your interview apart from answer writing and you need to be very neutral over there. So throughout our preparation we learn that we have to have an opinion which is much balanced where we have to have grey opinions in the grey areas halfway. This is the beauty of this examination that we need to be neutral when it is required to be. So these are the very many topics that we are going to cover. We are not going to form opinions here. We are just going to provide you the information that is required to form opinions. And why is it so? Because the High Court is hearing the petition with respect to the controversy and we do not want to have any opinion which might be in conflict with the judgment. So let's begin with the news. Many of you have been watching the news with respect to controversy around headscarf. Headscarf or hijab as it is called, it is worn by Muslim women, women belonging to a minority and as we try to sail through the different topics, we will know why. Why is it such a big matter? Why it has been politicized and why do we need to understand it from the constitution approach perspective? So the controversy began way back, two, three months back when the women who are from Karnatak in Udupi district of Karnatak from a government PU college. Okay, so their women used to wear headscarves, and this has been actually removed. Removed in the sense they were supposed to follow a new dress code. They have said that it is a sudden change of dress code, and as they have the right to profess their religion. By wearing a hijab, they cannot abide by the dress code. The uniform code, as they are not following the uniform code, they were actually this were prohibited from attending the classes. Now, the college did say that it wasn't something of a sight that women did not use to wear hijab in college premises, but they were asked to remove it during the classroom. And according to a BBC report, it was said that the, that the teenage girls, the teenage girls wanted to wear hijab, a handful of teenage girls because some teachers were male as well and according to their fundamentals of their religion, they have to cover their heads with the help of hijab. So this is the entire issue. The student protested on December 31st, 2021 and after that, the development committee of the college was holding continuous meetings with stakeholders and parents but there was a there was no solution with respect to this and students were told to follow the college dress code in the classroom the students after that they filed a writ petition in karnatak high court also approached the human rights commission national human rights commission then what happened this things from where it started to escalate on when in protest of those who are wearing hijab, some male as well as female started wearing saffron clothes, saffron scarves around their necks and that from was from government pre-university college in Kundapur. Not only that, this entire issue started spreading like a wildfire and student clashes were seen. And the girl students have argued that they cannot be forced to stay out of the school as they want to wear hijab, which is prohibited by the sudden change of dress code. To counter, now this we have already discussed, what saddening is, what is very saddening to this entire situation is certain videos have come where heckling of women were seen, where it was seen that a religious slogan was used to provoke another girl and that girl in retaliation said a religious slogan. So it's, I'm not going to form any opinion, but it is very saddening that 
schools and colleges where we form bonds for entire lives our entire lives religion and such minor under misunderstandings are creating rifts between the students students should go there to make friends to learn together but this was something which was not expected now not only that the students were also barged in the students the entire situation is such that not only the students of that particular institute but certain other men who were just there as an element as a catalyst element they are working to provoke any sort of tension between the students so this is the entire issue now what is the current situation as we know that the karnataka high court is already hearing the petition and it's saying that we need to maintain peace and tranquility in these streets and not cause any sort of rift and tension now the karnataka government issued an order stating that students have to comply with the uniform dress code prescribed by the college development committees and this is done because of their own rules they have their own rules and the opposition has said the opposition we have to make sure that we listen to each and every voice so rahul gandhi has said that by letting students hijab come in the way of their education we are robbing the future of the daughters of india then also shashi tharoor made a point through his twitter that it's been a strength of india that everyone is free to wear what they want if the hijab is disallowed what about the other symbols of religion that is practiced in our country also now this is said right now that high schools and colleges will be closed for 3 days and now peace is there in karnataka with respect to it also now we have to understand that we need a constitutional approach the constitutional approach is such that article 25 to article 28 it gives of the indian constitution gives right to freedom of religion to all citizens within the territorial boundaries of the country that is article 25 the right of conscience and right to profess that means right to manifest or show that i am following following this particular religion again freedom to manage religious affairs then freedom from payment of taxes of any particular promotion of any particular religion and freedom to attend religious instruction article 28 article 25 is like any other fundamental right fundamental rights are not sacrosanct in nature remember that so they can be subject to they can be restricted subject to public order morality and health and to other provisions so is wearing a uniform is that going to weigh heavy on the fundamental rights or fundamental rights are going to be restricted when we talk about other provisions such as having rules which make the school going or college going students follow a dress code so we see that first is article 13 we are going to talk about why because article 13 lays down the supremacy of the constitution making it very clear that in case of any conflict between the fundamental rights now here we are talking not only about fundamental right 25 that is the right to religion of conscience or freedom of conscience and freedom to profess religion but also article 14 right to right to equality that means nobody can be prohibited or discriminated against because they are wearing a certain symbol of religion then we also have right to freedom of expression freedom of expression under article 90 right to life and life with dignity so these are the many articles that we are going to that we are going to witness in this entire issue so again let's see that what does article 13 say any conflict between fundamental rights and any other right the former would prevail this is according to article 13 of the constitution and the petition which has been filed with the karnataka high court it is saying that wearing hijab is a fundamental right under article 14 and 25 right to equality right to freedom of conscience and right to profess religion of the constitution education institutions can't restrict it this is what the petition is saying of the students okay and now what another thing is said by the petitioners is we are not talking of burqa or entire veil 
it is a headscarf the first submission is that is the wearing of the hijab is an very importantly an essential religious practice this is a doctrine actually essential essential religious practice whenever fundamental right is invoked with respect to religion this doctrine is looked at by the courts so indian judiciary will have to look at it and to define the essential elements of religion the supreme court of india laid down essential element of religion doctrine okay remember this doctrine so if we talk about the commission hindu religious endowments madras versus shri lakshmindar tirth remember this lakshmindar tirth swami r of shri shirur math case in this what happened that it was laid down that religious opinions and acts opinions and acts done in pursuance of those opinions are religious practices remember this not only opinions but also acts in pursuance of that the implication was that the supreme court has said that rituals mode of worship and ceremonies these all will come under essential practices okay and also these have to be protected to the extent that they are within the limits of article 25 and 26 of the constitution again limits if they are a threat to public morality or other provisions they can be abridged but what is the opinion with respect to public morality that is yet public order and morality and other provisions because other provision is a very open ended term so what about that we will see uh, whenever the judgment will come now in the case of shri venkata ramana devaru versus state of mysore there was a practice in which people of some other religion that were outside of uh, that were not practicing hindus they were kept outside the hindu temples this was being said as an essential religious practice and in this case the supreme court sorry the court not the supreme court but the courts they talked about an archaic holy scripture that were examined okay and it was examined in order to see if this provision of keeping certain people out the temples is an essential practice or not if it is given in the scripture now what happened after this it said that although this was not a part of the essential structure but essential religious practice but the ritual to be performed there was only to be done from people of certain certain religion so that was an essential practice in jagdishwaranand versus police commissioner calcutta religious denomination status was granted to the ananda margis community this was also in the news but it was said that tandav which was the native dance of the community community it was not recognized as an essential religious practice there was a lack of evidence now if we talk about the next case fatima tasneem versus state of kerala of 2018 here the father of two girls who were 12 and 8 he wanted them to wear hijab but it was not this this thing was not granted now that was because it was first of all we need to understand that it was a catholic school and a single judge bench of kerala high court here ruled out that the collective rights of an institution was greater than individual rights of the petitioner again we can see how the things have gone in the current scenario the advocate advocate kamath they have, he has said he has referred to the verse 24.31 and verse 24.33 of the holy quran which purportedly talked about the head scarf or veil over head as an essential religious practice that means it is a, it is a core to the practice of being a muslim okay some muslims do follow it some don't and kerala high court judgment this was also cited which was of 2016 it declared hijab as essential religious practice of islam and allowed two muslim girls student to wear it while appearing for the cbsc all india pre medical entrance test now right now what is being done is the karnataka high court justice dikshit who is 
actually presiding as a judge to the entire petition he has said that it might be better to actually pass on this case to a larger bench so let's see what happens because at the end of the day we have to believe and have faith on the supreme court which is the guarantor of constitutional rights as under article 32 we know that the writ the right to right of a person to move to a court high court or supreme court under article 32 it's the supreme court writ petition and under article 226 it's with the high court so constitution should be interpreted by the judiciary by the high courts and the supreme courts and the subordinate judiciary in order to understand the larger perspective because this is not not at all political but it has been politicized it is actually not just communal it is question of law what do we need to define where the lines are right and wrong okay so let's move on and talk about our means based question please do practice it discuss the doctrine essential element of religion from the prism of indian judiciary in 250 words okay so that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching